مما تعلمنا وزدنا بفضلك علما وتعليما إنك على كل شيء قدير So where did we get to? Uh, in the uh, Ladina, number six. In the Ladina Kafiru, so actually, sorry, no, you were going to explain basically the Lamir al Fasal and that. Uh, okay. Lamir right, al Yeah, right before in the Ladina. In the Ladina Kafiru. Yeah, right, right below, right, yeah, right below the next paragraph after the Ibtida. Yeah, that one. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah. So, what's the best example in the Quran? Uh, best example, Kunta uh, Anta Raqiba. So, when you say something like this, Kunta. Raqiba. Right, a very simple sentence. Kana. Plus ism kana the ta plus khabar kana mansub. Okay? That's a simple sentence. You were the watcher. You were the watcher. Very simple. But then suddenly in the Quran, we see an enter in the middle. And we see the fatha on the ruqib. So if enter is the mubtada and the ruqib is the khabar, then why is the fatha there? And if Anta and Raqiba is not Mubtada and Khabar, then what on earth is Anta? Right? In this scenario, Anta could be, for example, a uh, Tawkid. Right? Why not? It could be Tawkid then. So in which case, Kunta is the Kana, is the Kana. Ta is the Ism Kana. And Ta is the Tawkid. And Raqib is the Khabar. However you make it, it's not the Mubtada and Khabar. Okay, so when you have a kana sentence, that's very easy. Similarly with uh, dhanantuka. <coughs> uh, dhanna, <coughs> uh, for example. Where's dhanna? Dhanna. Dhannaka. Where is dhanna? Or Dhanantuka, for example, Dhanantuka. Dhanantuka, or maybe Dhanantuki. Dhanantuki, Anti Al Ula. I thought you were the first. Dhanantuki, Anti Al Ula. So here, um, it's not a good example. Al Fadila, let's put another example because here you can't see the khabar. Al Fadila, I thought you were the best. You, 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 I thought you were the, so let's say, Tabiba. I thought you were the doctor. Not him or not her. Tabiba ta. Tabiba ta. Dhanantuki anti al Tabiba ta. I thought you were the uh, uh, the uh, doctor. So here again, there's a fatha on tabiba ta. That means it's the maf'ubihi thani of dhanna. And so this is clearly not a khabar of anta. Okay. However, when you say something like this, uh, when you say, hadha huwa al-bayt, Hadha al bayt, for example. Hadha al baytu. This is the house. And hadha huwa al bayt. Oops. Hadha huwa al bayt. Here we have two ways of looking at this. It's either. So hadha mubtada al bayt khabar. When I say hadha, this could be hadha is the mubtada. Huwa. And and who al bait is another mubtada is a mubtada and fa'il a mubtada and khabar, and the mubtada and khabar together form the khabar of hada. So in which case it can be like this: this this sentence here, who al bait, is the khabar of hada. Hada who al who al bait. Or 
it's something else, which is like this. It's this thing that comes in the middle for clarity, but is not actually the Mubtada, and it's not the Khabar, and it's not this, and it's not that, right? And so whenever we see a sentence like this, we have two i'rabs. One, technically speaking, it could be Hada is the Mubtada, and Hu al-Bayt as a Jumla is the Khabar, or Hada is the Mubtada. Al-Bayt is the Khabar, and Huwa is like enter in Kunta, enter Raqib, and it's just there as a kind of like clarity. It's there to make this make this distinction as and what we call Damir or Faslin. A pronoun, quote unquote, because not actually a pronoun. It's a, a word that sounds like a pronoun that's there just to divide things up, just to make it clear. Why would I use it? Because particularly when I'm using an ism ishara, if I if I say enter, uh, if I say had al baytu, you're not sure what I mean. Because when I say had al bayt, do I mean this house or do I mean this is the house? And so to make it very clear and add clarity and kind of a bit of a punch to it, you say Hada Hu al Baytu. It makes it very clear. Okay. And so that's what we call Damir Faslin. Right? Damir Faslin has these different and so it, is that clear with everybody? So in Kana it's very easy to see it. With Vonna, it'd be very easy to see it. With a normal Jumla Ismiya, it's not so easy to see it. And it could be one way or the other, and you have to look at the kind of meaning that's being indicated. Does that make sense, Sir Nusubha? Uh, Aban? So Hazal Bayt will be translated as this house and Haza Hual Bayt will be translated as this is the house, is it? Do we add so, to... But Hazal Bayt could also mean this is the house. It could mean this house or this is the house. <coughs> and does the uh, Alif Lam coming play any role? Uh, if, if, could we also say Haza Hual Baytun? Would it affect anything? No, right? Haza Hual Baytu? Haza Hual Baytu? Okay, okay. The same. Uh, in Kunta, what will it make that? Uh, say it again, sorry? In Kunta, it's just uh, Ramir Fasal, nothing else? Yeah, so in Kunta and Taraqiba, when you say Kunta and Taraqiba, that's only Ramir Fasal, it can't be anything else. It's not possible there's anything else. Oh, exactly. Okay. Because, uh, because here, because Raqiba has a fatha on it, that means that means Kana is taking an ism and a khabar, and that's it. It can't be anything else. Right. Type. Uh, it could it technically, I think it can technically be Tokid as well, but in reality, it has the same meaning if it was Tokid. They have the same kind of sense. Not really. I'm not really sure if it, how, what kind of different meaning it would have if it was Tokid, but in principle, it could also be Tokid. Allah Allah. Okay. Um, um, where, where were we? So, for uh, so then he says, he gives us two Arabs. He says, is is the uh, is either ibtida un thani, ay mubtida thani, i.e., part of that, that second sentence that is the khabar of that red box that I drew, the 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 uh, the khabar or the, uh, the mubtida and fa and khabar that, that together com, uh, co, uh, uh, constitute the khabar of uraika. Muflihun khabar al thani, ay khabar al mubtida al thani. Wa thani wa khabaruhu khabar al awwal. Right? I sorry, the khabar al mubtida al thani. Which is part of what we call a jumla sughra in minor sentence is the khabar of the first one, right? That was that's one scenario. That's what he means here. What is it? Za'ida? It's not actually a pronoun. Why is it actually a pronoun? I mean, it sounds like a pronoun. It's not actually a pronoun because it's not a noun. Okay, well, how do you know it's not a noun? Because it has no mahal. It's not doing anything. It's not the mubtala. It's not the fa it's not the khabar. It's not this, it's not that, it's not doing anything. It has no mahal. And so if it has no mahal, it can't possibly be a noun. If it had a mahal min irab, it'd be a noun. Right? It'd either be a have mahal min irab of the of the uh, of, of an ism or a fa'al or a fa'al, one of the two. And so it's it, it, it's it's not so it, rather it's a harf. So when he says za'idi here, he's saying, by the way, this hum, if I'm saying that ulaik is a mubtada and al mufli is a khabar, and the hum is just there kind of like as a change in the voice almost, then it's just something za'id that's extra. 
it's and we call it damir or faslin we yusammuna al basriyun fasila it's called a fasila we yusammuna yusammiha al kufiyun imadan i'm not quite sure why they call it imad um maybe because it's relied on in order to understand the meaning perhaps something like that okay wal muflihun khabar ulaika okay is that clear with everybody yes okay alladhina nasbun bi inna obviously wa amilat inna li annaha ashbahat al fi'la fi al idmar wa yaqa'u ba'daha ism yaqa'u ba'daha ismani wa fiha ma'na al tahqiq and i'm not sure what he means by here by idmar i think what he means here is, is iqtida Ah, uh, uh, I know it has a pronoun, that's right. So I believe he means because it has a pronoun after it. So basically, the grammarians, they're trying to set a system that applies everywhere, right? They're trying to deconstruct everything into one system. So they noticed that there was this, ver this word, inna. Inna was followed by two words. One of them was, this is my, my son. Come, come and give salams if you're going to, come and give salams. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. So one of the one of them is rafa, one of them is nasb. I said, hang on a minute, that's like a verb. Inna, three letters followed by nasb and rafa. That was like a verb. So they came along and they said, you know what? These are these words that behave like verbs. How so? They have pronouns after them. They have they have two nouns after them. And the, and it has a meaning. It's not just nothing, it has a meaning, tahqiq. And so it's almost behaving like a verb. But then they said, well, it behaves like a verb, but doesn't behave like a verb. And because it's of its weakness, the the rafa and, and, and nasb are inverted. It's the other way around. It goes nasb rafa as opposed to raf nasb, nasb, right? So that was their kind of paradigm, right? That's how they described it. They said it's so these called these words that behave like verbs. Okay. Uh Abdul Zak, can you get Daddy some water? Good boy. Um, okay, so that's how they explain kafaru in inna. So inna has three letters, anna has three letters, later has three letters, lakinna, five letters, right? No, four letters. Lam, alif, kaf, nun, nun. Uh, five letters, so that doesn't really work. La'alla uh, looks a bit like a verb. And also you say la'allani, you can say la'alli and la'allani, which looks like a verb, right? And I think you can say laytani as well, layti and laytani. Uh, yeah, laytani. Um, so it says kafaru is the sila, is the sentence that comes after alladhina. Alladhina wal mudmar, the pronoun, ya'udu ala alladhina. Uh, so, so the prof, the pronoun who goes back to Aladina. Qala Muhammad ibn Yazida, I don't know who he is. Sawa'an alayhim rafa'un bil ibtida'. A'andhartahum am lam tundirhum khabar. Sawa'an inna aladina kafaru sawa'an alayhim. Inna aladina kafaru. Aha. So sawa'un alayhim andartuhum am lam tundirhum. That's that all that whole thing is the khabar of inna. So he's saying, Inna ladina kafaru. Yes the we alayhim in the ruka iyahum wa adumu in the rika iyahum. Right. so so inna is a mubtada. Uh, is that, is that ism inna, and then the ism inna has a khabar inna. So how is it working? Uh, I'm going to show you all. The, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll show you all the combinations now, and then we'll you know, go go through them. So we have. Uh, In the kafaru sawa on alayhim.
So, possibility number one. How do you do this? Possibility number one. It's too thick. Possibility number one. So inna ladina kafaru is clearly one unit. So this is one unit here. There's another thing there. Sawa'una alayhim. La yu'minun. And a'anzartuhum amlam tundirum. So how many parts do we have here? Six parts. So either, it works like this. This, uh, this is... Ism inna. So that's our inner, sorry. <coughs> this is our ism inna. Ism inna. Uh -huh. Sawa'un alayhim is khabar inna. أَنْذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنْذِرْهُمْ is the fa'il and then this is جُمْلَ تَعْلِيلِيَةً أي جُمْلَ مُسْتَعْنَفَةً okay so that's number one Number two, uh, it's going to be inna ladhin kafaru. So wa un alayhim an dartuhum amlan tundirhum. This is jumla etiradiya. Jumla, so it looks very horrible. I'm doing using. You know, I don't have a mouse. Jumla etiradiya. Etira. اعتراضية This is خبر إنا خبر إنا Or This is So that's number of possibility Number two, let's go to another Pen here. So that's number one. Is number two. Is number three. Number three is some inna, of course. Is some inna. And then what? <clears throat> uh, This is Mubtada Khabar. This is the Khabar. And then this. And then this is uh, that that whole thing is the khabar, yeah, which is then a khabar, khabar inna. And then this is jumla ta'liliya. Okay, so that's the that's the main three. I think there are other options as well. So we have in the alayhim and amlam la So it either works like this. Indeed, those who have disbelieved, it is equal to them whether or not you warn them. Why? Because they don't believe. 
they won't believe. Okay, so then khabar, that, that this thing, this is just a jumla by itself that explains the previous sentence. Right? And this is the fa'il. How could this be the fa'il? Okay, no, there's two things. Number one, am lam tundirhum is a mufrad. It's not a sentence. What does that mean? It's a mufrad, not a sentence. It, it means that whether or not you warn, warn them is not a sentence. You can say, for example, I was wondering whether or not Zaid came. I would like you to know whether or not this is possible. So when you say whether or not something is the case, that's not a sentence. So it looks like a sentence. In fact, it looks like two sentences. There's nadar tahum am lam tu Okay, what's what's what do you want more than that? It looks like there's two sentences. True, there are two sentences, but these two sentences are being used in the sense whether or not. And so they're not re it's not really a sentence. You couldn't put a full stop there. You couldn't put a full stop there. And so it, it, uh, arguably, and I don't believe Samin Halabi considers that relied upon, but they said that the a uh, at the beginning, is what's called a harf mustari. It makes that sentence behave like a mustar. I.e. what it means is you're warning them and the lack of your warning. You're warning them and the lack of the warning. So it's, it's a mufrad, number one. Number two, sawa means mustawi. Hada sawa means kalimatin sawat means kalimatin mustawiyatin or sawiyatin it means equal it's a mustar true but it's being used as an ism fa'il okay so that's point number one so point number two and point number one and dartum am lam tundirhum is working as a mufrad it's not being used as, as a sentence number one number two sawa it has the meaning of ism fa'il okay it's like adl meaning adil or thiqa meaning mil okay number three we can have a structure uh, which, which, which is the following. Hada tawilun abuhu. Or, inna hada tawilun abuhu. What's the Arab of that? Inna hada tawilun abuhu. The Arab is the following. Inna is inna. Hada is ism inna. Tawilun khabar inna. Abuhu fa'il. So, a, a nat or a khabar, or in many other scenarios, the ism fa'il, ism of all, can have a fa'il, can have a fa'il, okay? The ism fa'il or ism of all can take a fa'il or an ism fa'il. And so this is what's happening here. Inna al-ladhina kafiru, that's that inna al-ladhina kafiru, that ism inna. Sawa'un alayhim is the khabar. A'anzartuhum am lam tundirhum is the fa'il of sawa'a. And la yu'minun is a new sentence explaining why. Why is it the same? Right? That's not option number one. Does that option number one make any sense to anybody? Yeah, guard it as stuff. So how does it make sense? Yeah, Adib. Wahida. I don't know why it doesn't make sense. Uh, say it again, sorry, Nasuha. I'm a bit confused. Okay. <clears throat> well, where is your confusion? Uh, did you understand the point that and uh, to is like a is like a one word kind of thing? Yeah, that I understood. That made sense, okay? Yeah. Then the other thing is the structure that you maybe you haven't seen, which is when when, when the ism fa'il or ism of all takes a fa'il or na'ibul fa'il. Okay, and so uh, that's so the thing to understand is that the ism fa'il and the ism of all are basically verbs. So I say, for example, ana dahib, which means I'm going. It's like saying adhab. Ana maqtul, or I'm going to be killed. Sa'uqtal. It's basically the same thing. For which reason? Because it's the meaning is so similar. Because the meaning is so similar, uh, it, it behaves. Like an ism, uh, like a like a fail, and it can act, and it can take a fail. So it's basically saying in the kafaru yes the we alayhim. It's almost like saying yes the we. So what means almost like saying yes the we alayhim. Uh, where is our? Yeah, this one understood. Right, and then it's like so in the yes the we alayhim and dar tuhum alam tundirhum. Right, that's basically what's happening there. Or 
that's not what's happening. So number op, option option number two then. Uh, let's do option number three first. It, not, option number three is no. It's not. It's not khabar inna and fa'il. Rather, there's ism inna, which is inna ladina kafaru, and then the khabar of of inna ladina kafaru is antharthum amlam tunzirhum sawaun alayhim. Right. Um, yeah, that's understood. Then uh, 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 so that and then the yu'minun. So that would be basically khabar mubtada. Uh, so that would be khabar and mubtada. And that whole thing, the khabar and mubtada, which is inverted, swapped around, is the is the khabar of inna. Um, and then the other option, option number two, is that it says inna ladina kafiru la yu'minun. Right, inna ladina kafiru la yu'minun. That's the, that's how the sentence is. And in the middle, you say, well, yeah, whether you warn them or not. It's almost like saying whether you warn them or not, inna ladina kafiru la yu'minun. Or inna ladina kafiru la yu'minun, whether you warn them or not. And so it's a jumla i'tiradiyya. Right? Jumla i'tiradiyya, it's a parenthetical say. It's in it's in it's in it's in parag- it's in it's in, it's in brackets. Right? So inna ladina kafiru, you know, whether you were whether you warn them or not, they won't believe. Okay? And I think that's basically all the options. There are other I think there's some other options as well, I'm trying to think. No. I think that's basically it. So does that make sense? He said uh, this Muhammad bin Yazid is saying Sawaun Alayim is Rafa bin Liptida. So he's saying uh, the Sawaun Alayim. Uh, Aban, before, before we move on, does this, uh, does, it, does this make sense so far? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so now let's go and read what he says. So it says, قَالَ مُحَمَّدِ بْنِ يَزِيدِ سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ رَفْعٌ بِالْإِبْتِدَاء Okay, easy. Right, meaning, إِنَّا نَلَذِينَ كَثُرُ رَسْ إِسْمْ إِنَّا And then we now have a jumla that is going to be, that is going to be the, uh, that is going to be the, uh, that is going to be the خَبْرَ of inna. So then he says, رَفْعٌ بِالْإِبْتِدَاء أَنْذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنْذِرْهُمْ خَبَرْ Okay, did I mention this position? No, I didn't. Oh, no. I didn't mention that. No, I no. said that I said that it's khabar mubtada, not mubtada, mubtada khabar. Right? And so that's it's problem his position here is problematic because he said that sawa'un alayhim is the is is the mubtada and anzartum am lam tudirhum is the khabar, which doesn't really make sense because you don't say that. How could sawa'un alayhim be the khabar, be the mubtada? Because that means that I'm almost saying, I'm saying something like this, tawilun anta. Now, if I say tawilun anta, that's fine. You can say that, right? That's fine. Um, uh, but the issue is, uh, the issue is when you say tawilun anta, it's khabar mubtada, not mubtada khabar. So there's a alamat if there's a question mark around his irab here. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is he's saying, kafaru, and then the tooth that sawa'un alayhim and amlam tundirhum is the jumla, <coughs> which is the khabr of inna. Wal jumla tu khabr inna. Ay annahum la yubad annahum tabahalu. Hatta tabahal tabalahu. تَبَالَهُ حَتَّى لَمْ تُغْنِي فِيهِمْ النَّظَارَ I don't know what that means. بَلَهَ Oh, بَلَهُن is, uh, بَلَهُن is stupidity. What's the qasida? تَطْلُبُ لَيْلَ وَهْيَ فِيكَ تَجَلَّتِي وَتَحْسَبُهَا غَيْرًا وَغَيْرَكَ لَيْسَتِي فَذَا بَلَهٌ فِي مِلَّةِ الْحُبِّ ظَاهِرٌ he says, you're looking for Layla and she's right inside you. And you and you and you think that she's other than you, but she's but but other than other than you, she is not. That's stupidity for that balahun. That's stupidity for me little hobby in the in the religion of love. Vahirun, obvious. So be a bit bright. Uh because seeing other is the very means of being cut off. And that was Muhammad al-Harraq. 
one of the great uh, Sufis of uh, Suf late Sufis of uh, Morocco, Morocco. So tabahlu, they're so stupid, they feigned stupidity, or they were acted so stupidity, stupidly. Hattalam tughnifihim an nazara, warning them was pointless, <coughs> availed them nothing. What taqdeer sawa'an alayhim al indar wa tarkuhu. So the question then, how can sawa'an be a muqtada? That's the question. Ay sawa'an alayhim hadani. He says, wajia bil istifhami min ajl taswiya. Whether this or that. Anyway, قال ابن كيسان ويجوز أن يكون سواء خبر إن وما بعده يقوم مقام الفاعل. There we go. We mentioned that, right? So إن is إن ذا نكفروا إن إن واسم إن سواء عليهم خبر إن and then what is after it يقوم مقام الفاعل. Right. We mentioned that position, right? Yes. ويجوز أن يكون أن يكون خبر إن لا يؤمنون أي إن الذين كفروا لا يؤمنون right لا يؤمنون وأنذرتهم أم لن تنذرهم ثمانية أوجه in which case there will be uh, eight positions concerning أنذرتهم أجودها عند الخير ليصيب away oh there's something else so then he doesn't mention the Arabic but it has to then in which case it has to be جملة اعتراضية Right, a parenthetical sentence. It's like saying, "Qala Muhammadun Rasulullahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna man amanu bi niyat." Right. Uh, so you said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam" is a jumla atiradiya. Parenthetical sentence. Um, okay. So anyway, so anzartahum. There's eight ways of doing it. أجودها عند الخليل وسيب ويه. So in terms of تخفيف الحمزة الثاني وتحقيق الأولى. So ah, uh, so we call this تسهيل uh, تسهيل of the حمزة. أنذرتهم. So أنذرتهم ah ah أنذرتهم. You lighten the second one a little bit. وهي لغة قريش وسعد بن بكر وكنانة. وهي قراءة أهل المدني مدينة um, وأبي عمر والأعمش. Right, so I don't know, uh, Medina don't, uh, at least in, in Warsh they don't recite like that. In Warsh they do, تخفيف uh, الهمزة الثانية, meaning تبديل or ibdal uh, الهمزة الثانية. So the, in, in Warsh it's أنذرتهم, not أنذرتهم. وقال ابن كسان وروية وقال ابن كسان وروية عن ابن محيص أنه قرأ بحذف الهمزة الأولى. You just say أنذرتهم. أنذرتهم سواء عليهم أنذرتهم فحذف لالتقاء الهمزتين وإن شئت قلت لأن أم تدل على الاستفهام so you don't need it right because you said the أم is already there uh, and he mentions the line of poetry he mentions that وروي عن ابن عن عن ابن أبي إسحاق أنه قرأ حقق الهمزتين وأدخل بينهما الألفا لألا يجمع بينهما. This is an إدخال. And I can't, I can't pronounce. You have to ask someone who's good at Tajweed to pronounce إدخال. It's like, basically, it's somewhere in between. Uh, it's somewhere in between changing the second Hamza into a lighter Hamza and making it into an Alif. Somewhere in between those two things. أنذرتهم. قال أبو حاتم السجستاني أنا الرازي ويجوز أن يدخل بينهما ألف ويخفف الثانية. And so here's my problem. Because this is what he's talking about here, where you and you dhil bainahuma alifan wa yukhafif al-thaniya, which is idhal. So I don't know what the difference between those two are. Like I, I know my tajweed isn't good enough to know those things. Those things there. So wa qara hamza wa wa asim al kisai bi tahqiq al hamzatain. A anzartahum. Wa huwa ikhtiar abi ubaid. Wa 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 dalika baidun in al khaliyu sibway yushbihu al thqal bi. Uh, be, uh, I don't know what it is. It seems like it's, it seems like the problem of having two letters at the same. قال سيبوي الهمزة بعودة مخرجها وهي نبرة تخرج من الصدر بجتهاد وهي أبعد الحروف مخرجا فثقلت لأنها كتهوع. So Hamza is hard to pronounce. Hamza is not a weak letter. Rather, it's ah. It's very difficult, right? So according to uh, Khalil and Sibway, it is of the huruf al-halq. 
but uh, later scholars will say it's not really it's, it's well, here is mentioning min al sadr actually uh, and it's min al sadr but others it's not really uh, it's slightly different to that anyway it doesn't matter the point is it's very difficult so what do we have uh, from a sarf point of view uh, but uh, there's more things that are more r refined in tajweed but we have tahqiq uh, a'a Right or tasheel ah, uh, so I'm gonna write it small. It's there. It's the hamza, but it's lighter. Or we have ibdal ah, uh, or we have hadf ah. Uh. <coughs> so we see that a lot in uh, hadf in susi. With qaraat susi, when you have two hamzas, often one is just dropped. Ja ahadakum. You just say ja ahadakum. Ja ahadukum. So you don't say ja a ahadukum because there's two hamzas next to each other. They just say ja ahadukum. Just drop one. Um, a anzar I don't know what they do that in 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 Susi with a anzar Um, but um, yeah. So you get ibdal a and a and a a and a. Excuse me. But in reality, there are, in the book, it mentioned two other ones that are somewhere in between these two. And this is where, 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 where Tajweed trumps um, Nahu and Saf and stuff like that, because there's things that are just more advanced, subtleties that are beyond the normal things, is a half there or not kind of thing. Um, like how much Qalqala and how much this and how much that, for example, these things are subtleties of Tajweed. And so he mentioned um, Idhal, which I can't do myself. And um, let me just see if I can find an example on that. Uh, uh, go ahead. Play? Play? I have the social recitation now. Shall I play that? Bismillah, go ahead. Yeah. Idhal. <laughs> That's Ibdal. Yeah. It's a, it's a, say Idhal. I don't know what's that. It's no, no, that's just, that's just, he just said, and yeah, So the uh, question is, so he did Ibdal there, he changed the second Hamza into an Alif. The question is, do we then add to it a Mad'ar this Sukun or not? So in Warsh, you would, and right? But let's try and find an example. Uh, show, what's, that, what's that, that famous uh, Tajweed teacher, Swaid? Ayman, Dr. Uh, Ayman Swaid, I think his name is. Yeah, Ayman Swaid. Yeah, Ayman Swaid. Uh, Al Idhal. Try and see if he gives an example of Idhal. Kharaj al Haruf. Tasheel Ma'al Idhal. Here we go. That's on Facebook. Uh, What videos? <clears throat> okay, on his Facebook page, there was a link at Tasheel Ma'al Idhal. Here we go. Surat Al Ada and Dartahum. And here we go. So I will just send you the link and everybody can have that for later on. That. So you can all listen to that. Tasheel ma'al idkhal. There we go. Okay. Um, Okay, so I believe in uh, which book he talks about this. I'm not sure if we cover this in the of the Hamza and stuff like that in the, in the Shafi'ah, but it's in uh, uh, what is it? Al Marah. I think that was the book called Sarf. Marah al Arwah. 
Okay. Um... And he says, أخفش سعيد تبدل. Why does he say أخفش سعيد? Because there's another أخفش which is older than Sibawai. And there's another أخفش sometimes after him that's younger. So he's أخفش الأوسط. Right? He's the one in the middle. There's about seven or eight of them that are famous. Um, so here it says أخفش سعيد. This is the, you know, so there's, I believe, one of the teachers of Sibawai is called أخفش. And one of the students of the students or the students of Sibawai is called أخفش as well. قال الأخفش سعيد تبدل من همزتها أن فتقول هنذرتهم كما يقال إياك وهياك وهياك قال أخفش في قول الله عز وجل ها أنتم إنما هو أأنتم ها أنتم means أأنتم um, which would make sense because a way of kind of avoiding that sound والتاء في أنذرتهم في موضع رفع وفتحها فرقا بين المخاطب والمخاطب والمخاطب سواء إذا أنذرت وأنذرت أنذرت والهاء والميم نصب في وقوع الفعل عليهما أي في في محل النصب أم لم تنذرهم جزم بلا معلم جزم حذف الضمة من الراء والهاء والميم نصب أيضا لا يؤمنون فعل المستقبل لا موضع Lila mina Arab, la doesn't have any Arab. Um, okay. Khatama Allahu, Khatama Fi'al al Nadin, Wasmullahi Jalla, Waaz, Marfuan bin Fi'al, Wala Kulubi, Marfudun bi Allah, Walha, Walmim, Khaftun bin Idafa, Ala Samahim, Mithluhu, Walima Lam Yakul, Wala Absmahim. Um, so it says, Ala Kulub, Khatama Allahu, Ala Kulubihim, Wala. Why doesn't it say ala asma'ihim? So qulub is plural, absar is plural. Why isn't it asma'? وَقَدْ قَالَ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ فَفِيهِ ثَلَاثَةُ أَجْوِبَةٍ مِنْهَا أَنَا سَمَعْ مَصْدَرْ فَلَا يُجْمَعْ right? Masdar, a concept cannot be pluralized. Right? When can it be pluralized? When could you pluralize a masdar? Or a concept? A concept like love, like capitalism, like uh, indiv individualization. When, when could you pluralize it? When can I say things, things like civilizations or socialisms or loves? He has two loves in his life. Maybe when you're talking about more than one object? Oh, yeah. When, when it's no, the point is not just more than one object, Aban. It's when it's changed from the concept to, from the mustard to an object. I don't mean the mustard anymore. So when I say he has two loves in his life, he has I two objects of love in his life, but he has one love in his life. He does one thing called loving. So love means loving. It's a process. It can't be. It can't be. It can't be become more than one. Right. Your knowing cannot be more than one. Uh, your thinking not be you can't have thinkings. No, you have thoughts. The thing that you're thinking about can be more than one, but your thinking process is only one. So any process or concept or a mustard is only ever one. Right? So when can it become plural? When it becomes different when, it, when using it metaphorically to mean objects of those things, like different one, you know, different loves or different whatever it is. Uh, like you say a thikat. Okay, how can it be plural? Because I mean, people who are, who are reliable, not, not reliability itself, right? Um, I have liabilities. You don't have, you don't have liabilities. You mean you have things that you're liable for, right? So the liability of those things is one. Right? Liability is one thing. So number one, if, it, if, it, if it's used metaphorically to mean an object, to mean an object of that thing or someone who undertakes that action, like civilizations, i.e. examples of civilization happening, and number two, when it's of different types. So when I say, you know, the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the communisms of the, 19th, of the 20th century, the communisms, what do you mean the different types of communism? So that's how it becomes plural, the different types of that thing. Otherwise you can't, uh, it, it can't become plural. A concept. Is there, something, 
Uh, you, you had the yeah. There's something like even in talaq, there's some issue if you use the master. What is that? Uh, if you use a master, it becomes three. Uh, is that? I'm not, sure. I'm not sure the fiqh of that. If anybody knows that, uh, the fiqh. Well, something uh, like master. I didn't understand them. If you use the master, so if you say if you say anti talaq, it means three. Um, I, don't, I don't know. No, that says something about master, but I don't recollect that. Yeah, but it would it would go back to the go back to that same discussion. Yes. It would go back to that same. So so try and find the masala and bring it to maybe next next lesson less, 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 next and, lesson. Okay. Uh, in, it's useful in the Shafi school. Uh, in the Shafi school, if you if you walk in if a man walks into his room, walks into his house, and tells his wife says talaq talaq talaq. Do you know what what's the ruling on that in the Shafi school? Shafi, I don't know, but in Hanafim. Hanafi is over, right? So isn't that a film? In a Bollywood film, Talak, Talak, Talak? Yes, and Talak. Right. It's classic. Everybody knows that's divorce, right? In the Shafi school, whether you intended or you didn't, it would mean nothing. Oh. It would mean absolutely nothing. It's not a sentence. So we have in Shafi school, the, the, the Al-Fad of Talak are of three types. Either it's sarih, in which case it doesn't matter if you intend it or not. So you, you look at your wife in the face and you say, you are divorced. Okay, did you intend to say you are divorced? Yes. Do you know what? Did I do? Yes. Okay, that's khalas, she's divorced. Yeah, but I didn't intend divorce. I just saying the words. It's fine. Khalas, you intended to say those words, that's it, it's divorce. Okay, whether you intend it or not. And then there is, get out of here. We're over. This marriage is finished. That's, that's kinaya. If you intend, it's divorce. If you don't intend, it's not divorce. Right? And then there's lagu. You look her in the face and say, tomato, tomato, tomato. And then you mean divorce. Okay, but what does tomato mean? It doesn't mean anything. That's called lagu. It's just nothing. And so talak, talak, talak is the third category. It means nothing. All right, it's a very useful dispensation to use when a marriage is worth saving. Right? However, you can't tell people that. Right? I mention it here because inshallah, we're all tullab and we have level of maturity and we respect these things. We can't tell people stuff like that. Because otherwise, we'll be like, I actually decided to take my wife back. And that happens, particularly out of an, outside of a Muslim country, when there's nobody to uh, there's nobody to decide between people. So they, they get back together again based on the Shafi school, and then they have an argument. So she decides that she's Hanafi actually, and they're not even married, or vice versa. Right? And you can't do that; it's ridiculous. It's a complete you know. So you have to do one thing, and stick to it. Right? And so this it's a useful dispensation, but it is uh, you know in the Shaf, Shafi school. But it's uh, it's only to be used when you say, "Listen, I honestly think this marriage should be solved," and you know, uh, and the, and the, the the problem with people is that they, they don't have they don't have the maturity to act as adults. If people act as adults; it's all fine. If people don't act as adults; it's problematic. If you're old, if you're old enough to get married, then you're old enough to get a divorce, and so and you're old enough to have children, then you got to take responsibility. And people do stupid things, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so, uh, so number one, he says, oh, because the mustard sema is on their hearing, not on their ears, on their hearing, and hearing cannot become plural. That's number one. Number two, waqil huwa wahid yu'addi an al jamia. Right? It it has a sense of plurality anyway. Waqil at taqdeer wa ala mawdi' samihim, the place of their hearing. Right? Anyway, it's all there. Wa ala absarihim rishawa. Right, we'll mention this, inshallah, next week. So if you remind me, we'll start there, inshallah. Assalamualaikum